Thank you very much, guys, and welcome. And I just want my guest to introduce herself. So, my darling, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Gretchen Mungai. I'm a lifestyle designer on sex and relationships. I'm a marriage crusader. I am a mother. I am a wife. And I'm a woman, too. Wow. Okay. I'm interested in such relationship. I wonder how your husband, because you say you're, you're a wife. Yes. Because they say, because actually, normally if you say you're a sex ex expert, you talk about sex, a lot of people would think, hmm, they don't want to talk about that topic because they'll see you as either a spoiled person, mm -hmm. a prostitute, a person who goes out with so many men. Mm -hmm. How can you be doing this and then you're coming here to tell me you're a mother and you're a wife? <laughs> how do you how do you deal with all this? Your mother, a wife, and also a sex expert teacher. Yes, just like you said, I'm a sex expert teacher. I am not a sex wow. worker or a commercial sex worker. <laughs> But I can tell you, I have been told, I've been called all sorts of things, you know, especially uh, being an African in an African country, these things are not mm -hmm. discussed uh, openly, and there are very few mm -hmm. sex therapists, you know, I am mm -hmm. among the first uh, to break, uh, on to be on TV talking publicly about this, and um mm. I started doing this in my marriage. I, I was already married. Yeah, mm. lucky me, I was already married. I, I don't know what would have happened if I became a sex a, a sex part or <laughs> therapist before I got <laughs> married. Yeah. Yes. But um, I, I've, I've been in marriage now for this will be the twenty sixth year. What? And really enjoying. Yes. I just turned fifty this year in Feb. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> wow. So like you say, age is just a number. Uh, or oh, imagine yeah. it is. It is. I feel more alive now. Well, I can't run as fast, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I am more in touch with my sexuality. My babies yeah. are grown. My last born is turning twenty-one, and uh, my wow. first born is turning twenty-five. So I yeah. am enjoying my marriage right now. I can't wait for the little one. To oh, the younger one to leave, then life can really yeah. begin, you know, with my husband. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. Mm. So, how did, how did your husband take it when you say this is what you're gonna do? Did you guys discuss it, or did you just come up and say, Oh, look, this is what I feel like doing? And actually, who even motivated you from doing that sex expert uh, teacher? Well, I, I think I don't even think I've met people like that, uh, even in the UK. I'm sure you've met quite a number in the UK. No, I haven't. Probably there is. I'm not saying yeah. there isn't, but personally, I have not met anyone. Ah, then I am honored. The first expert you meet is an African, Kisha from Kenya, Nairobi. Yes. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't say we 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 had to sit down and discuss my career because it didn't just. I didn't decide this is what I'm gonna do. It kind of creeped mm -hmm. in on me on me. Um, I, I remember, um, the first five years, the first years of our marriage after my first born, after my pregnancy, got my first child. Uh, I was not able to resume my, uh, work to go back to work. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay home mm -hmm. because we had the complications. Yeah. I decided to stay home. So, um, uh, I think I'm, um, I'm one of those people who can't just sit. So I love to cook. I started cooking and my Nairobi friends started taking advantage and, uh, they would have parties or have this, they will ask me to cook and they used to pick food and they don't even pay for the ingredients friends there <laughs> anyway so mm -hmm. one time before i realized i had started the catering you know a uh, small time mm -hmm. catering i had been hired to do a bridal shower by the time i got there i realized oh my goodness um you know uh, i i just sat and nobody even asked who is this not invited you know they in fact they used to call, call me the food lady uh, I didn't want to just set up, go, then come back for my stuff. I decided this, for these two hours, let me just sit in. Then I realized, oh my goodness, 
uh, they, they are giving the wrong advice to the bride. And the few married mm. women who are there who are too negative about marriage. And I'm looking at this bride, okay. she's freaking out, you know. And I'm like, okay, this is not how it's supposed to be. I didn't even know I had such, uh, had a lot of information, you know, because I come mm -hmm. from the coast and this is Nairobi. You know, so I decided wow. uh, I'm gonna switch things around, and uh, because uh, nobody, it was just an open forum discussion. I started, I started some sort of a game, and I told them, for every two bad things you tell us about marriage, tell us one good thing about marriage. You know, I was yes. young and young in my marriage. I was still having fun. I just couldn't believe some of those things were discussing could happen in my marriage. So, you know, I, I had, mm. I had, um, I was still, what can I say? I was still fresh and maybe still yes. in my honeymoon phase. Well, right now, uh, after 20 years of marriage, let me tell you, the honey is over. It's just the moon. Mm. And we are still in it. Mm. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? So before I before I knew it, and guys, the, the mood changed, and uh, we were yeah. listening to the two bad things people were saying, but everybody kept looking forward to the one good thing that is happening in that person's marriage. So yeah. that's how yeah. I started. Then uh, when I came home, I, re I started coming across some hard information, you know, some... I had questions and I would come home, ask my husband, I would go back to the coast and ask my aunties, you know, uh, mm -hmm. every time I couldn't answer, uh, I didn't have an answer for a question asked, I wouldn't pretend mm -hmm. I knew it. I would go looking for information. Yeah. Yes. But then, uh, like I said, I realized as a coastal chick, having been brought up uh, at the coast, we in a coastal family, I realized I had a lot of information. And imagine that's how I started. Bridal showers, advice, you know, wow. as simple as uh, love making preparation. In fact, that's how I started. I'm big on that. Still, okay. I am still big on that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. telling people you don't just uh, take a shower or you shower in the morning and then you don't shower in the evening and you're a married woman. Mm -hmm. So you've got to mm -hmm. have a routine at night. Smoke your Miss Victoria. Yeah, I call the vagina Miss Victoria. Smoke your Miss Victoria. You know, do some sensual Miss stuff. Miss Victoria. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I love use code. I love using code words. Miss Victoria is actually the vagina. Mr. Victor yeah. is the penis. And Momba Saraha is okay. Mr. Victor plus Miss Victoria. Just in case I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Raha. <Mombasa> Raha. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Let me just write that down. Mombasa Raha. Okay. Yes. So Mombasa Raha nice. means sex. Um, so uh, I started teaching, you know, uh, prepare. You this is how you clean properly. You don't over clean. You don't use uh omo with power form. Haina madoa doa. So what are you doing? You know? So yes. slowly before you realize people started looking for me. There's a bridal shower, they invite me. There's a ladies session, they invite me. Somebody's birthday, she's hosting a group of her friends. I didn't know it was going to be as big as it is right now. You know? Mm. Yeah, but here we are. Mm. But after that, I decided now to go for uh, training to get more information. Because I realized yes. just the coastal information wasn't good enough. So I did go mm -hmm. cross the border, go to Uganda to learn the Ugandan version. I tracked what? down, yeah, I also did a lot of Kama Sutra. I tracked down um, tantric expert in SA, you know. So I, 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 I came up with my own version for a modern a sexy woman who has to juggle up marriage, career, her own life, motherhood, you know, and um, in laws too. Wow! So basically, I actually, I'm actually speechless. <laughs> I like the fact that you actually took something that was negative mm -hmm. and turned it into positive mm -hmm. when they were telling this bride, uh, they were giving the wrong advice and they were telling them. Literally, what they were saying is like they were scaring them out of marriage. You know, sometimes they think if they tell you all these scary things, yeah, then you can't, you won't stay. And you decided you see, to actually, change it and turn it around. Yeah, they, they they didn't mean to scare the the bride. Uh, most of the time, they were telling the truth of what is happening in their marriage. 
but i also realized they were not equipped you see at the coast they train you mm. basically they mm. give you marriage stamina so whatever you encounter mm. in your marriage you are able to handle it so i realized mm. most of these ladies didn't have that kind of information yeah they'll say like um um you're gonna add a lot of weight he's going to lose interest you see it's the truth uh we get married we get babies we blow up like i got married i was size eight by the time i was getting my first child i doubled up i was size 16. so it was the truth you know and there's no one to actually show me right now there's a lot of information 26 years ago we didn't have this much information you know in fact you give birth your mother-in-law shows up with a bucket of jahe u jahe bon soup you know you're you're told yes. eat you're eating for two you know you have to breast and before you realize oh my goodness you're not fitting in your clothes i just came mm. back from honeymoon you know and mm. uh sometimes some men also lose interest because this is not the body you know uh they had bargained for you know so the yeah. most of the things they were saying they were true you know but they were too negative a bride didn't he need to hear in that kind of a forum you know mm. and uh some would say he's gonna cheat on you you know and uh not all men cheat at least i believe not all men cheat yeah yes. so yes. basically yes. that is what was happening so i just kind of changed the narrative and uh we, we we had a lovely time and um voila my career was born Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good career. That's a good career, though. Yeah. So, we have love-making preparation. Yeah. I love to hear that. Mm -hmm. And our, the vagina is now called Miss Victoria. And yes. then the other one is Victor Victor. And yes. then together is Mombasaraha. Uh -huh. So, anytime we refer to Mombasaraha, mm -hmm. people should know what you're talking about. You're talking about the woman and the man's private part. Yes. And if you're talking about Miss Victoria, is mm -hmm. a woman's Mr. 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 Victor yes. is a man. Where, where did you get these names from? <laughs> First of all, it makes people comfortable. Remember, uh, I, 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 I was given a TV show, you know. So, and the TV show, as much as the show was at 10 in the night, uh, nobody was talking about sex openly you know mm. so i needed to come up it's not like i had rehearsed come up with a script and this is what i was going to do i remember this first episode first of all this guy took a chance you know the head of uh, tv that particular station took a chance and uh we had discussed like don't go to sexual people are not used to this kind of conversation so as we were shooting our first episode he was at the corner watching you know i sometimes yeah. walk in and say cut it's not even the producer you know so i was having so much fun i decided okay i need to make him comfortable so i remember standing introducing myself and saying we are going to talk about miss victoria and you know uh so i started giving i started coming up with code names which i was using you know behind closed door in a, a living room that's where we started i used to do my bridal showers you know and now i'm here taking it out on tv i picked up oh. the same same uh code names and the first episode was a hit you know and up to now yeah. i tell you uh an old man will come all the way from moranga coming to my office yeah. because he has premature ejaculation and do you know i will have a whole sex conversation with this guy without him feeling yeah. embarrassed because he'll tell me now madam mungai this is what is happening uh every time i go to mombasa raha uh, sifiki mombasa naishia mlologo as in <laughs> you know you're kenyan yeah. Eh? Yeah. so you understand yeah, yeah. so he doesn't even get quarter or halfway he ejaculates you know yes. so we'll have a whole yeah. conversation and i will be able to help that old man without him yeah. feeling embarrassed that he's talking to somebody as young as his daughter or he's talking to another woman about this problem and will he will go home restored you know so yeah. and then african we are, we are conservative still don't don't know what to say about kenya i don't know whether we are conservative or pretenders but it doesn't really matter i want to make everybody comfortable so using code names works you know it works a lot i think it's i think 
we are not conservative. I think we are more pretenders <laughs> because we get 14, 15 year old girls having sex right left center. So how can we be conservative? I think we're just pretenders that mm -hmm. oh I don't do that, but mm -hmm. we actually do it a lot. And it's, yeah. I think it's not just Kenya. I mm -hmm. think it's not just Kenya. Sex is something that, uh, unless it's the Western world, because mm -hmm. the Western world, they talk about it openly. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an African thing. Or it's a black thing. Not just an African thing. It's yeah. a black thing. Mm -hmm. It's something that was seen as a taboo. Mm -hmm. Something that we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. We were even told by our parents, don't talk to the boy. Just talking to mm -hmm. the boy, you'll get pregnant. Some people used to tell us, if you talk to the boy, you'll get pregnant. How do you get pregnant? Just talking to the boy. <laughs> So, and then they tell you, don't talk about vagina, mm. don't even feel yourself. They don't even tell you to, just touching your own breast or feeling yourself is a sin, is mm. something wrong. Mm. You're, you're, you're um, inviting some spirit. <laughs> like, it's, it's a lot of things mm. when it comes to black community. Mm. So I think these things, that's why when I met you and you told me this is what you do. First of all, I was like, what? Sorry, again? <laughs> I'm telling you, I've never met anybody like this. So it's, we need to break it down mm -hmm. and say, you know what, it's okay to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. It's okay because it's helpful. Because we yeah. don't have a lot of people with problems, like you say. Yes, but yes, we do. You do. But I, I, I specify, you know, I, I, I love, I call myself a marriage crusader. So even this sex mm -hmm. conversation, I love talking to married people. You know, married men, married women. And that's why I'm big on bridal showers where I prepare the bride for marriage. Because I believe marriage is supposed to be enjoyed, not enjoyed. You're supposed to go mm. and enjoy your marriage. And this pleasure when it comes to the bedroom is not just for the man. You mm. know, in fact, we get multiple orgasms in one session. They can only get one big one. So who is sex, what is sex, who is sex meant for? Women. Mm. I don't know why we are taking mm. a back seat when it comes to sex. You know? So let's talk about it. Let's open up. Let's both enjoy it. Okay. And uh, I would say sometimes, especially in marriage, and many people say uh, sex in marriage is boring. I beg to differ. I beg mm. to differ. I think it can be the best. You know, you just need to know how to spice it up. You know, and mm -hmm. you need to know yourself as a woman. And he needs to know. And uh, ladies, don't assume this man knows how to touch you the right way. That, Teach I him. Think that's the, that take is, him to school. That is the big one. Yeah, take that him to school. One. We expect as women mm -hmm. that he should be romantic. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be honest, I, I'm one of them. I feel like you should be romantic. So you should think mm -hmm. of how to do this, do this. But I think that's, is, is it wrong? Mm -hmm. Come again. I say what you just said now, mm -hmm. that women mm -hmm. expect men to think that Mm -hmm. This is how you should touch me. This is what you should do. Yes. But I, I say we do that a lot because yes. we expect the man to be romantic. So he should know what to do. Mm -hmm. So is that a wrong thing that we're doing? It is wrong. He he can't mm. know. Like I like different things. You know, I'm an individual, and this body enjoys to be touched in a certain way, uh, not like the next woman. You know, like so many people assume every woman like love to kiss. I don't like to kiss. You know, and there's some women mm. who don't like that. Oh, but they I call this the dashboard, and the backside I call them supporting documents. <laughs> supporting what? Supporting documents. <laughs> That's the bad. Supporting you know? documents. Oh my god, this is funny. And dash dashboard. Yeah? Yes. So not everybody loves a man landing on their dashboard and they're squeezing like they're milking the cow. Where is the fun in that? You know, so he doesn't know. Teach him how to touch you as a naked woman. You know, yes. don't just assume. Yes. And guys, stop being lazy. What is this with fingering? Please, you know, can you just learn how to handle the pleasure knob? The pleasure knob is the clit. You know, do you know it's the only organ in your body? Its sole purpose is sexual pleasure. What's the, what's the clit? The clit. The clitoris. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's what I call the pleasure knob. Yeah. Pleasure knob. Yes. Pleasure knob. Oh, pleasure knob. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the only organ in your body. Its sole purpose is sexual pleasure. It doesn't have any other job. 
Most of our organs in our body, body parts, they have one, two, three other, you know, things they can do. But the clitoris, the pleasure knob, sole purpose, it's there for your pleasure. And yet men don't know how to handle it. You know, they don't know they're putting fingers all over the place. So slow him down, teach him. You wouldn't know. I think... I think this is this is interesting. But before we go back, let me go back to I wanna go back a little bit mm -hmm. to when you say that you've gone to Uganda. Mm -hmm. So there's Kenya, Uganda and Kama Kamasutra. Kamasutra so the Tantric yes. uh Tantric yes. They're just different yes. different versions of love making, you know, and they are more of lifestyles if you ask me, you know, because having been brought up at the coast. Uh, mm -hmm. towards the end, because they came from coast, but from a Christian family. Not all yes. coast areas are Muslims. I'm a Christian. Yeah, and they came mm. from a Christian family. So my version, and they come from a very special place at the coast called Freer Town. That's where the free, free slaves were settled. I come from that mm. community. Yeah, so we had our own version. And uh, I wasn't given heavy sex information until when I was about to get married. But uh, the Swahili culture teaches their girls when they're very, very young. Like uh, they call it kubale. When you get your first periods, ukibale, you're taken to those homes and you're given a lot of information. If you ask me, it's too much information. So you have a 12-year-old girl who started her periods being taught all those sex techniques and tricks, you know. Uh, of course, she's going to want to experiment. So for me, I got the lessons. Um... 40 days to my to my wedding you mm. know yeah but after that because hey, uh, when i realized my husband enjoyed of course we were intimate before we got married not very proud yes. of it but we were so during yeah. our honeymoon he told me it's like he was sleeping with a completely different woman and i'm like oh really so i went back for more <laughs> ah, yes. you, know? yes. then, you see now that is the that is the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That is the advantage mm. that people from the coast mm -hmm. or Uganda as well, mm -hmm. or Tanz I don't know about Tanzania, but Even I think Uganda do that as, as well. They teach yeah. the ladies. Yes. That's why they always say, if a Ugandan lady gets your husband, you're done at it. So I know Uganda and coast do that. But in Nairobi, I mean, or in my culture, or mm -hmm. in Nairobi, they don't do any of that. It's your problem how you know how to have sex. If you know, if you don't know, that's your business. Do you so know? Think you think is important. Yeah. Do you know? Every community in Kenya had their version. It's only that at mm. some point they dropped the ball. But every community had their own version. It's only the Costarians kept at it and they continued and they still do. You know. Yes. But even yes. uh, Kambas, Luos, Kikuyus, Kaleos, we all had. Everybody had their own version. Yeah, but then also uh, the coastal version, um, I had to add, remove a few things in art because like the training I got, it was tailor made for housewife. I'm not a housewife. Mm. So it was a struggle at the beginning. Huh? And that's yes. why my version is tailor made for a modern career woman, a modern sexy career woman, you know, because mm. I, I believe uh, even if you, you, you're the president of the country, like Madam Sulu, you Sulubu, right? Right. yeah, uh, the Tanzanian president, you know. Yes. At the end of the day, you're still a woman, you're still a wife, right. and you have exactly. a role to play in your husband's. Yes. So how do you yes. balance? So I came up mm. with a very exciting uh, version for our generation a little older and moving forward. You have to be a one-stop mm. shop for your husband. You have to be a wife. You have to be a lover, and for lack of a better word, you have to be a nice little hoe, you know, with stripper poles and dropping it like it's hot, you know. You I can like charge it. him for sex. Like Just... <laughs> what, if, what if your husband, what if your husband, because I know some black men mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. who, when you're that, like, that little hoe, mm -hmm. or, or the, all these things, they don't like it. They just want straight, bam, and we're done. Don't they? Don't they like it? I think most men do, but they categorize us as she's a wife. She can't do this. If I want extra, extra, 
I go to the to to the hall, and that's what I'm telling ladies. Ah, no, okay. no, 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 no. Don't give him a reason to seek anything else from anybody else. Play the, all the roles, and I'm not saying you become a whole through and throughout. There's time mm. to be a wife. There's time to be a lover, and it's needed. And there's time to forget your somebody, your his children's mother, because at yes. the end of the day, you're a woman. And trust yes. me. Uh, if you combine the two, then you will live a pretty good, balanced marriage life. Okay, mm. And I'm not saying it's bulletproof. If you do all this, he's not going to go out. If he's a person to mm. go out, he will go out no matter what you do. He will look for a reason to go out because he comes from that school of thought. But do your yes. best. Because we, I feel like women, we are missing out. Just playing it, wife. It's nice. It's noble. But it's not everything. It's not enough for us. It's never enough for me. Mm. I want to step mm. it up. I want to date him. I want to be his lover. I want to be his friend. And I want to even to take it higher. I want him to look at me with a different eye. Not just the mother of his kids. I want every mm. time he sees me. You know, he gets goosebumps because he remembers what I did the other night. Mm. And wow. trust me, when I was doing that, I wasn't being a wife. I was going all out. And it's fun for us women. There's no boredom, imagine. How do you get bored? Mm -hmm. You just keep switching. You know? <laughs> and before you realize, 10 years of marriage, 15, 20, and here we are, 26. Wow. Wow. I pray that I'll get there. You will. <laughs> I pray that I'll get there someday. I know that I'll get there someday. I mean, this place is now coming very this time. Mm. I, I think I, I, want, I want to learn more. Mm -hmm. So how do you mm -hmm. become a girlfriend, mm -hmm. a lover, mm -hmm. a wife, mm -hmm. and the whole at the same time? How do you, how do you become all these things? Mm -hmm. Because it's you, one person. So how okay. do you now? So, first of all, uh, this applies to wives only. As much as I'm yes. a sex part, you know, mm. I, uh, I, I still am very traditional when it comes to some things. And I know so many mm. women who are listening to this might disagree with me, but just hear me out. As a wife, I'm already a wife. I'm his wife. I'm not his girlfriend. The deal is sealed. You understand? And then yeah. I can step it up. I become his lover. And I can become his own. For a wife to play the whole beat, it's very hot. But for a girlfriend who's not seen the deal yet to play the whole beat, it might just scare the guy. Men can be very, very selfish. As a girlfriend, you play the whole beat, he will enjoy the wholeness in you. But when he's ready to get married, imagine he's going to go and get a nice, decent, maybe virgin wife. Ah, you know? Okay. So we have to tread very carefully. You know, I know there's freedom, you know, especially in you, Komaju. But then I can speak a bit of Swahili, right? Yeah, Nisa. Oh, thank God. Nisa. Okay. You know, uh, Uko Maju, Muko UK, Muko Britain, you know, and you're thinking, eh, you forget you're a Kenya or even a Kamgiriyama from where I'm, I'm, I'm Brabai from where I'm coming from. Yes. And you unleash yes. and you give him any. There are no more surprises, you know. And before you realize, he's getting bored. Okay? Mm -hmm. And before you realize, mm -hmm. he's gone married a naive because that's what he wanted. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it is safer to unleash all this in your marriage. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I call spicing it up. You know? And I'm telling you, when it, when it comes to the whole bit, I, I go hard. You know? <laughs> yeah, because what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? I own a stripper pole, a kamasutra chair, all those things. Charge him for sex if it makes him happy. You know? So, wow. why not? Okay. Why not? It's just part of the games you do as couples. Mm, you know, mm. and it will enhance your relationship. Yeah, but so if... one thing I want to say, mm -hmm. one thing that I want to say, Gertrude, is and it's still in my mind that you said the fact that you mm -hmm. so I'm just talking to women out there mm -hmm. who feel like oh their husbands are so conservative mm -hmm. when it comes to sex making, mm -hmm. when it comes to bedroom matches, mm -hmm. and they just want sex in the bedroom, mm -hmm. they just feel 
privately, mm -hmm. that's what they want because they see you as a wife. Mm -hmm. But when they go, they, they don't go out there and look for something spicy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Might not all of them do that. Yes, but the ones that do that, they go out there and look for something spicy. So yes, you be the spice. You be the spice. Be the spice. You know, serve him three dishes. You know, don't give him ugali ugali every day. Even if it's the uh, fish and chips, he can't eat that every single day. And I'm not saying you unleash this out of the blues. You know, mm. you can bring it easy if it's not you. You know, be having this in your relationship. You can introduce yes. it in a very subtle way. Yeah. Okay. And you, you know, can even exactly. You can you, it fish. Exactly. Exactly. But from what I know. And trust me, I have a lot of experience. Uh, and there's so many men who feel comfortable talking to me. They love it when the wife is naughty. And a man who doesn't like a naughty wife, either he is that conservative and he doesn't know any better, or he feels like he should have it elsewhere and not from his wife. So I'll talk to the wife. What kind of a person are you? Are you excited to drop it like it's hot? To take it or not do you want to do that you know and if you do don't let him stop you because this is it i don't want to cheat when i want that hard naughty you know to be roughed up kind of sex i don't want to get it from anywhere you know and if there's a man listening just know that you're not the only ones who crave for variety when it comes to sex in a marriage women crave for variety too so mm -hmm. as much as we want to be a one-stop shop for our men, they can also be a one-stop shop for us. It's only that it's not exactly the same. A one-stop yes. shop for a man to a woman, it has to be somebody who loves you, you know? I normally tell women, uh, okay, it's part of the coastal teaching I got. And um, mm. I think they teach you this uh, to have, um, so you're able to... The word has escaped my mind, but if it, it comes, I will tell you. A one-stop shop mm -hmm. for a woman is the first, you, you need to have three men in one. They tell you mm -hmm. one man is not enough. You need to have three. And they go on describing mm -hmm. who these three men are. One mm -hmm. has a big fat wallet. He can buy you mm -hmm. whatever you want because money is important. Don't let anybody kid you. You know, and this yes. thing of gold diggers, gold diggers, sometimes women are not gold diggers. They just want a good life. Mm, you know, life. yes, eh? mm -hmm. so uh, one who can buy you anything you want, a man with money, okay, and a second man is the one you love with all your heart, you know, yeah. he's a good for nothing brother, you know, he's maybe broke, he doesn't have anything, but every time you see him, your heart melts, and the third one is the one who can make you speak in your mother tongue behind closed doors. He doesn't have money. You don't even like him that much. <laughs> but every time, <laughs> every time he touches you, I'm telling you, you're speaking in your mother tongue. Okay? So a woman needs the three. And it can, they can symbolize many, many, many things. But women, we are special. We can pick one and run with it. Forget about the others. Pick one. Your heart is content. If it's money you wanted, you overlook so many other things. As long as you're crying in the Mercedes and not, yes. you know, laughing on a bicycle. There's some women who yes. are like that. Can we stop calling them gold diggers? That is what makes okay. their heart rest. You know, so from yeah. the three, decide which one. But I say you can balance it out and have it from one man. Maybe you will not have too much money. He will not have mad skills when it comes to, to the bedroom. And you kind of like him a bit when we're in business. You see, it's not exactly the same as one-stop yes. shop for the woman. Yes. You know, so I normally tell people when it comes to marriage, there are different shades of grey. <laughs> 